In this problem, it's first important to orient ourselves to just what we're looking at in the graph. And that this is the function L of t, which has a fairly complicated looking form, 60 square root of t sine squared of t over 3. But let's focus on the units for a second. The units of the y-axis are cars per hour. Units of the x-axis, of course, are, are hours. It's a time measure. But it's the cars per hour we need to think about. What that tells us is that this function itself is already some sort of rate. That means that the area under this curve, roughly speaking, is a measure of how many cars pass from a certain time A to a certain time B. And having that clear in our minds is important all the way through this problem. So A is a particularly straightforward question. It simply wants to know the total number of cars that turned left at the intersection. Well, since this is a measure of the rate that cars are turning left and we integrate over the time to get the area under that curve, namely the number of cars from some beginning point to some ending point. And so what we're doing is the integral from 0 to, to uh, I guess it's 18 of L of t dt no need for us to write out that equation again. We can numerically approximate that by using our calculator, and we get 1657.8237. Now let's double check what the problem asks for. It asks us to round to the nearest whole number, and so we're going to go with 1658 cars. Now if it had said how many cars we would have actually had to round down to 1657 but because it said to the nearest whole number that's where we leave it. Okay let's look at uh, what's happening now in part B. They simply ask when is this rate of cars per hour higher than 150, higher than or equal to 150 cars per hour? Again, we've already had to put the original formula, the L of t function, into our calculator in order to do part A. So in part B, we insert an additional line into our calculator, y equals 150, and from that, we can find the intersection points. I'll just um, suggest that what we're doing there is finding where this line, which is 150, finding where this line intersects our curve. That's, uh, again, a numerical calculation, and the intersection is uh, found to be the beginning point of intersection, which I'll write as B, sorry, is 12.42831 hours. And the end point, which I'll call E, is at 16.12166 one, two, one, six, six hours. Notice I'm using five digits after the decimal point of significance for all of my internal calculations so that I'm confident that my end result is accurate to at least three decimal places. And so those are the intersection points. Now it further asks us to find so this is the interval, I'm sorry, the interval um, uh, 
when L of t exceeds 150 or is equal to it is from uh, is the time from B to E. Now it asks us to find the average value of L over this time. All right, now, if we're asked to find the average rate of change of something, that's a, an Algebra 1 calculation, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. But we're being asked to find the average value of L. Now, we don't want to be confused. They've given us L. Yes, it's the case that L itself is a rate of change. But whatever quantity they give us, if they want to find the average value of that, then we have to remember that the formula for the average value of a function over a particular interval is uh, 1 over the end minus the beginning values, the integral from the beginning to the end of that function integrated with respect to whatever variable. And we can evaluate this numerically. And we get the approximate number 199.42608. So almost 200 cars per hour is the average value over this interval. Part C asks a related but different sort of question. First, they tell us that, first we have to understand what this means talking about the product of cars that are turning left and cars that are going through the intersection. Uh, the product of left turning cars, that rate, times up and down going cars, I, I presume. Um, right, has to be less than 200,000. So that product has to be less than or equal to 200,000. But the problem is actually a little bit simpler than that because they tell us that the rate of cars going through the intersection is 500 and that it's a constant. So if this hadn't been a constant, we would have had to integrate the product of the two functions over the integral. Uh, like this. Let's call the straight through traffic S of t. And that could have been a fairly messy integral. So we're going to go from the beginning to the end um, where this uh, beginning and end is not necessarily the one that we've been looking at previously. But because this S of t is 500, this is equivalent to simply finding the integral from some new beginning and end point that we haven't gotten to yet of the left turning cars being less than uh, 400 over the two hour period. <clears throat> okay, let's talk a little bit about this two hour period. Uh, the beginning is a little bit difficult to precisely define. I'll talk more about that later. The end is obviously going to be two hours later, however, because whatever time we start, two hours later, we're going to stop. Now, before I talk about the officially perfectly correct way to assess this question, let's just observe that this means that as long as the traffic flow is over 200 cars per hour, since we're integrating over a period of two hours, this condition will be satisfied. And here I've written these conditions backwards, it looks like, every time. I have to apologize for that. Let's go in and fix this. This product, our integral, 
has to be greater than 200,000. And therefore, what we're looking for, over, integrated over a period of two hours, has to be greater than 400. The simple way to do this is to simply find a two-hour interval where the average traffic flow is higher than 200. And so if, similar to what we did in B, we simply find an intersection point between the y equals 200 line and our L of t curve, If these points are more than two hours apart, then we are guaranteed that there's some interval, in fact, many intervals over which, for a two-hour period, the traffic turning left is, is greater than 200 cars per hour. And so, just by solving numerically for the intersection, we determine that uh, this occurs from 13.2325, sorry, 304 hours, and it continues until 15.32387 hours. That's more than a two hour period, so the answer is yes. This uh, intersection needs a traffic light.